My name is Maxim Vengerov and I'm violinist and conductor. Today we have uh, three students playing violin concerto of Beethoven. Three movements, three students. So everything is uh, First of all, free? we are meeting in the room, one-on-one uh, -on -one together with the pianist, imagining there is an orchestra behind. So I'm preparing them for the next step, which is an orchestral rehearsal. Hi, I'm Roberto Ruisi, and I'm one of the soloists in the Vengeroff Masterclass tonight. Roberto is a wonderful violinist who has uh, close to perfect intonation, uh, very good musical ideas, and he's very experienced as a player. Uh, he looks, at least on the outside, as a very confident player, uh, very communicative. Yet, I know what we're going to talk about uh, to tonight, and I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> Ah, you see, the bow changes, yeah? So by Such a detailed uh, lesson you know, that talks about kind of the more uh, philosophical side of, yeah, of Beethoven and playing Beethoven. Finally, you see the light in the end of the darkness, huh? of the dark tunnel, yeah? And I... It's like the stairs to heaven. That's what he it spoke is. in well, great detail here, about yeah. how this concerto can transcend you to heaven, but is also at the same time very earthy. This is the best way to explore this repertoire without so much risk and with joy and pleasure and to get to know the cornerstones and where the uh, sharks and dangers are. After you have learned all the challenges and solutions in the, with the orchestra, you know it all, then you should let go. Yeah? So, and that we'll explore, of course, tomorrow. <laughs> Hello, my name is Mark Messenger and I'm Head of Strings at the Royal College of Music. Every student has different needs and they respond differently and in different ways. And I suppose one of the, uh, the magic tricks of a great teacher is that they understand that very quickly. They understand the psychology of the student, they, un they understand what they need. I think he finds what is strong in you as a violinist and then exaggerates that um, and brings it out in its best way. I think he knows with a player straight away whether they have some fire in them, whether they have, when they really want to make music. And I think that one of the best things is that every single inch of his, his body and his body language is focused around inspiring you to do as much as you can. Maria is a very sensitive uh, girl who plays the second movement and she's, uh, her tone is beautiful and she's, uh, she can melt in the musical material. She, she's so adaptable and so, so flexible. She is meticulous in her preparation. Uh, she thinks about everything. She thinks about every note, how every note should be played, how every note should sound. It was amazing to work with, with Maxim Bengerov and he's one of the big legends of the violin and the music as well. It's like the magnet. Exactly. What's wonderful with Maxim is that he is not at all dogmatic in his musical views, but he has such a wealth of wisdom and knowledge and experience that, of course, everything he says is valuable and everything he says is pertinent. 
Um, but I think actually great artists are in their souls, they are humble people who understand that, that every point of view can be the correct one and, and we can learn from everybody. The main feeling I got from him is a uh, human feeling. We, we look up to these uh, musicians, these artists and we feel like they're up there and, and it's something we really want to achieve, you know, to be able to speak our, in our own words uh, this music. And he was, he was just a human being who was telling his story and of course there is so much to learn from him. The temptation is to take the violin and to learn the notes and explore the musical material in depth and what can I say with this music, how can I adapt this music to myself, how can I shine and how can I express my emotions using the music. You still ta -ra -ra -ra, you learn. Can horns vibrate so much? Details that relate to the orchestration, to the instruments that are playing in the different themes in the concert, in my movement, for instance, uh, there is a lot of woodwinds, the horns, then the strings, and how that uh, interacts with me and uh, how I interact with them as well, how I pass the melody from one to another or from them to me and so on. The chemistry between the student and the teacher is it's always in a state of flux and it always has to have the possibility of traveling both directions. Uh, yeah, tomorrow is the concert and uh, I'm very excited actually because I haven't played much with orchestra and not with Wenger of conducting, that's, that's amazing. and I'm from Luxembourg. I think she's so elegant with her instrument. She has um, an incredible intellectual grasp of what she's doing. You have to distinguish between all the characters that are in music, yeah? And you have to study them separately. He has a very deep knowledge of this music and he really transmits that and he shows us how important it is to um, know all the different elements in this music and to characterize it well and to really communicate later on with the orchestra. You don't need to slow down. I think this preparation and the journey that we're going through uh, it's also a great discovery to me. I played the Beethoven Violin Concerto definitely more than 300 or 400 times in my life. But uh, each time I'm coming back to this uh, piece, uh, it's as if this is world premiere. Yeah, the typical, typical, you know, elements of hunting. Yeah, has this element. It can be scary um, because, yeah, it's a person that has so much charisma and such a big career, and we all admire him for that. So, in that sense, it can be scary, but also inspirational because of the, the same reasons. I think what the soloists get from this experience is both short-term, medium-term, long-term. In the short-term, they get something very immediate which helps them play and helps them perceive and helps them feel this piece in a way that makes more sense, is more coherent, is more cohesive, is more secure, is more assured. In the medium-term, there are elements both of how they develop as performers and, and how they perceive this piece, which, which give them confidence and it grows inside them. So the next time they play it, 
they're building on an accumulation of, of, of experience. All my life I've been studying and immediately I wanted to share what I've learned with others. I think this sharing an opportunity to share with others is the greatest joy of my life. I don't even call it teaching because almost when you share, when you give a gift to the audience or to uh, advice to students, this is, you know, of course you're giving a gift, but we are so fortunate that we can give a gift. The end of the fairy tale. <laughs> I think tonight when they've finished and they've done their concerto and, and the audience have applauded and we pack up and go, of course, what will remain with them in that one moment tonight will be excitement, will be satisfaction, will be a, almost a sense of kind of enlightenment and revelation. It's almost a rite of passage as well. Master classes, are they worth it? Of definitely, course, definitely. Yeah, we learn so much definitely, from it, yeah. Yeah. and especially in these kind of settings because it's so unusual. And yeah. It really opens our playing, and yeah, we react to, we react yeah. quicker as well, and yeah, it's more pressure, but in a way it helps. To oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. What now? A drink? Yeah. <laughs>